Um, I want to start talking now about motivation in general and um, how to increase motivation in students. Um, and uh, we'll just jump right into it. Um, <clears throat> the main framework that I like to use uh, when uh, when we discuss motivation, when we think about motivation, is um, the self-determination theory, um, and uh, developed by Edward D.C. and uh, Richard Ryan in 1980. Um, it's become one of the more dominant uh, frameworks. Uh, a lot of psychologists use it. Uh, a lot of research has been done on it. It's uh, we're always talking about it. And um, it's a very effective, uh, simple, uh, very powerful way. You know, use it as a framework um, in figuring out how to motivate your, your kids. But basically, there are three needs. Uh, there's autonomy, competence, and relatedness. And when all three of these are, needs are met, then motivation will increase. Now, the reason it's called self-determination is that there is a continuum going from a motivation all the way to intrinsic motivation, uh, which is the most powerful form of motivation. And as a, as a person, as a student goes along that continuum, going from a motivation to intrinsic motivation, they're becoming more self-determined, right? So they're relying less on other people, external factors, um, and becoming more motivated from within. Um, by themselves, okay? And that's kind of the goal, right? <laughs> um, imagine your student getting good grades, doing everything he needs to do without one word from you, right? Um, so there are three parts to it. Uh, autonomy, uh, which is basically the feeling that um, the student has a choice and he's studying because he wants to study not because he's being forced to study. Um, competence, which simply means mastery or um, being good at something. And relatedness is um, the need to belong to someone, to somebody, uh, to a group of people. So they should feel supported in the classroom uh, by their teacher, by their peers, and of course by um, the parents um, and the family. Right. So those three things have to happen. All those three things are there. Motivation will, will naturally emerge. Um, today we're going to talk about competence. Um, before I jump into it, I do want to say autonomy is the most important aspect, uh, the most important of the three. You can be good at something and you can have a good support system uh, fulfilling the competence and the relatedness needs. But if the if the person, the student, does not feel like it's his thing and he's not doing it because he wants to do it and it's his choice, there's not going to be any motivation there. Okay. Um, we'll talk a lot about autonomy in our next couple videos. Uh, today we're going to focus on competence. Okay. So competence basically it's just uh, what you're good at. Initially, the, what I want to point out is um, people who know me, uh, one of my pet peeves is, um, you know, find your passion. That phrase just drives me crazy um, because passion is not found. Uh, passion is made. Uh, that's what I believe very strongly. The reason I believe that is because um, I think, you know, people get this wrong. They think that you get good at what you like, right? Meaning, uh, I like basketball, so I'm going to practice it, and then I get good at it. The problem is um, you're assuming that they're motivated to play basketball even before they even know what it really what what that really entails. Um, what I believe and what I've seen um, <clears throat> time and time again is that people actually like what they're good at, right? So you get good at something and then you start to really build a passion for it, okay? Um, so that's the first thing, right? to think of competence as really important because you don't really find your student really truly loving an activity, whether it be, you know, algebra or basketball um, or, you know, leadership skills, anything like that, 
it's not until they get good at it, and then that's when the passion um, is found. Um, so, um, the second point that I want to make about competence is that you really can't cheat it. Um, deep inside, you know, students know they can't really lie to themselves. They know whether they're really good at it or not. And to have that genuine, that, that genuine feeling of competence, uh, that authenticity is so important. And um, because of that, competence has to be acquired through a lot of work, a lot of hard work. It has to be done through effort. Um, and this is, this is kind of, um, I think we talked a little bit about this before, but um, it's the effort that really needs to be there. When someone, when, when a student thinks that he's good at something because he's talented at it or because he's just naturally inclined to it, um, you'll find that they're not as motivated. Um, but students who have acquired competence through hard work, man, they, you know, they will never quit. They're so persistent and so strong and so passionate about it because of the investment that they put into it, right? Um, talent does have a place, but talent is basically how fast you acquire the skill. It doesn't mean that you're gonna have, you don't, no one's born with skills, right? Um, so it's gotta be acquired through effort. Um, to develop competence, there has to be a lot, there has to be clear feedback, okay? Um, positive feedback, okay? so. And this is the problem that a lot of, you know, educators and psychologists have with the, the self-esteem movement, right? Because you're complimenting students on things that they haven't done. And then they don't actually know if they're good at something or not. You need clear feedback. That doesn't mean you berate them for um, losing all the time. Um, but it does mean discussing with them in a positive way why they lost this time, the specific reasons, and then figuring out what to prioritize to work on next time so that you can get better at it, right? Um, now, let's talk about achievement goal theory. I like achievement goal theory because uh, it, it really helps you think about um, tasks, uh, jobs, work, uh, developing skills, practice um, in a really good way. Achievement goal theory talks about ego activities and task activities. That's what they call them. Ego activities are kind of like uh, competitions. Uh, they tend to be stressful and negative and anxiety filled and they're extremely important. However, um, they do have those characteristics. Task activities are just, am I better today than I was yesterday? It's just to focus on getting better at whatever activity I'm doing. So um, if the student is uh, writing, learning how to write uh, essays, and the teacher says, well, your essay was the best among all the students, the teacher has turned the essay writing into an ego activity, and there's going to be a lot more stress associated with it. Yeah, that's important because you do need to know where you stand, right? It's a lot of grades are like that. Task activity would be like, well, you didn't make any grammar mistakes this time. Your grammar was great. Spelling, no mistakes. Your, uh, the organization was great. Your diction was great. I loved your intro. Um, man, you really did better. You know, you got an A this time. Last time you got an A minus. Um, that would be a task activity, okay? If your student has low motivation, you have to focus on task activities. Turn everything into a task activity, okay? If they need to go out to a competition, don't say you gotta win, you know, it's going to be terrible if you lose. Don't focus on that. Just say, just get a better time than you did last time. Okay. Just focus on this one uh, thing that we, we worked on. Okay. Just try to do a little bit better on your spelling. Just try to do a little bit better on your algebra. Um, turn it into task activities so that they can develop competency, right? Um, develop their skills. Okay. Uh, De-emphasize ego activities if they have low motivation because at this stage they don't have the competence right you need the competence first before the motivation comes in so to develop the competence focus um, less on the competitive ego aspects of it okay 
Um, and um, I call this the grandma syndrome because uh, where I come from and a lot of Asian families, um, you have grandma, grandparents, are always trying to encourage their kids, but I hear a lot of bad stuff. Um, you know, kid comes home from school and he's very discouraged. And grandma says, oh, you're smarter than all your kids. Don't, don't feel bad. You'll do, you just turn the whole thing into an ego task, right? By comparing your, your grandchild in with the other students. Um, instead, save those comments and, you know, think carefully about, about how you're going to encourage them. Okay. Um, okay. Yeah, um, I love Steph Curry. <laughs> uh, I wasn't a huge fan, but then I saw I saw some videos in, of him practicing, and I was like, "Man, this guy is amazing." Um, you know, he'll have he'll practice running around, landing on his spot, getting his feet, knees, hips, shoulders square to the basket in like you know a fraction of a second, right before he shoots. So he's not practicing his jump shot. He's practicing everything up to the jump shot. And he'll do it over and over and over. He'll do it with a coach with like rubber bands around him, restricting his movement um, so he can develop his power. That is a very essence of what we call deliberate practice. Okay, so let's talk about deliberate practice a little bit. Um, homework is, is a great time for deliberate practice. Okay, They can work on specific skills without worrying about time, you know, no competitive pressure, uh, no one's watching, they can develop. Um, but one key component of deliberate practice is you need to have clear feedback, okay? Um, one of the problems with our school system is that uh, teachers don't, in a lot of cases, they don't provide um, detailed feedback and consistent feedback. So um, one day, the teacher will say, well, you know, your spelling wasn't really good. The next day, spelling's still bad, but the teacher will say, well, your organization wasn't very good. Um, and uh, we get this a lot when we look at, um, so our students who are having trouble with, in their English class, they're getting a B, they want to get an A. We look at the comments from the teachers and, um, and the comment is, you know, work on your diction. Um, that, you know, that's, very vague. There's so many different things to work on there. Um, your organization needs a, needs a lot of work. Well, um, that's very vague too. You know, we need very specific comments. And so one thing that you should do when your students are doing homework, get them a tutor, um, be it an older brother, sister, aunt, uncle, mom, dad, um, you know, paid tutor, whatever it may be, and help them with very specific skills. Okay, um, let's just work on diction today. Okay, so give me an essay that you've worked on and let's go through every single sentence. We're gonna go backwards from the last sentence to the first. So we're not concerned, to, we're not gonna get lost in the flow of the narrative or the story or the structure or anything. We're gonna work at every single sentence as it is and we're gonna to try to strengthen where we can by um, improving phrases and using stronger nouns, stronger verbs, right? Um, and we're going to do it over and over and over for the next 30 minutes. And then you're going to take a 10 minute break because it's going to be completely exhausting. That is deliberate practice. Okay. Um, so, um, I'll talk about deliberate practice, uh, very specifically in future videos, um, uh, cause it's really important. Um, but if you do it this way, another benefit that you're going to get is that the student will see his own progress. If you do exactly what I just talked about in terms of improving diction, Mondays, Thursdays, 30 minutes, and you do it for 12 weeks, the student will become competent, more competent at writing, and the student will see that progress. They will earn that progress and you will see them actually starting to like essay writing, um, right? Um, yeah, just some more, uh, just a, a couple of more tips. So uh, one of my favorite books, Talent is Overrated, 
please read it. It's a great book, um, but I will talk about this in future videos. Uh, set small goals, break them down. Um, perseverance, patience, dealing with frustration, we need all that. Um, break things down into components so that they know exactly what they need to work on. Uh, rather than five different things, work on one thing at a time and get gain competence on, on those mini skills to develop the larger skill. Repeated practice. When a student practices, if they're getting tired, you need to get them to pay attention, concentrate, and try harder, okay? If they can't because they're exhausted, then you need to stop. If you practice something, a skill the wrong way because you're exhausted or you're tired or you're too distracted, you're going to get bad habits. You'll actually get worse at it, right? So um, in, in the book, Talent is Not Enough, one of the findings was that you can actually, a human being can only do like two hours worth of deliberate practice every day. That's all we can do. That's all we can handle. Um, that's how energy intensive it is. So don't expect your child to do four hours of deliberate practice working on their, their algebra. It's not going to happen. Um, you try it. Try it yourself. See, see if you can do it. You can't. Um, so 20 minutes, take a 10, 15 minute break, get some water, get a little bit of snacks or you know, eat a banana and then go back at it. And then they're probably done for the day for that activity. And then maybe do some other uh, deliberate practice. Uh, let's work on, you know, um, reading comprehension for 20 minutes. Okay. Let's go super hard. Let's go hundred percent full concentration. And then we'll take a break. Uh, and then you need clear, honest feedback. Okay. It's gotta be clear. It's gotta be honest. Um, what I would advise for parents, just pick one, <laughs> one thing to criticize. Okay. I know you're going to see five different things that they need to work on and it's going to be a little frustrating because you want to help them with everything, but they can't handle it. So pick one thing for today. Let's work on this. And um, if they're having trouble with it, then just spend the next two weeks just working on that. Once that's done, they'll have more confidence, they'll have more energy, and then you can move on to the next thing. Okay. So uh, confidence and next video, we'll talk about autonomy and relatedness. And, um, and then we'll come back to the, uh, the uh, self-determination theory framework um, and talk about more applications to students' motivation.